Hey guys, it's your boy Top Show here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and today we got arguably the most exciting of the Resplendent Heroes. We got Resplendent Elliewood. Now this guy was already really good, even before he had the Resplendent Alt. He just hijacked Brave Roy's Refine and turns out that he actually makes better use of it because he's got way more res than Brave Roy has and he also is way easier to go for the plus 10 merges on since he's a 3 or a 4 star summon. And I mean this guy, he's been in the game since day 1. So a lot of people have summoned multiple copies of him and it's not going to be hard at all for people to go for the plus 10 with this Elliewood. So after him getting this Resplendent Refine, it's really hard for me to say he's not the best day one unit in the game now, as far as all of the three and four star summons are concerned. So we're just going to be discussing some builds here and some possible setup options you may want to run him on and which modes he's really going to shine in. So starting off, let's just take a quick look at his base kit. So his weapon is Durandal and... I mean, <laughs> the one that it starts off as is really not that powerful, but this weapon is pretty cool because it has two possible upgrades that you can go for. The self-refine that you take is going to give it basically the same effect that Lysithia has where it's, I believe it's plus 10 attack and then plus 4 speed if he initiates combat, and he doesn't need his special attack ready like Lysithia does. So his upgraded Durandal was already a pretty strong refine. But then he gets Blazing Durandal, which is Roy's refine, and this is where things just get over the top for him. So Blazing Durandal comes with two effects on it. Well, three, I guess, because it has attack up three. But it also comes with essentially special fighter. So you're able to quick charge your specials while inflicting the guard effect on the foes. And it also comes with steady impact, which first of all is not even a skill that's released in the game yet. It gives him plus 7 speed, plus 10 defense, and it negates the foe's chance of doing a follow-up attack when he initiates. So an incredibly powerful effect, and not only that, but it's also not a skill you'd be able to inherit on a cavalry unit in the first place. All of the impact skills have been locked from cavalry inheritance, so the fact that he gets that on his weapon, along with special fighter when he initiates combat, is so insane. And that makes him amazing in pretty much most of the modes you would be running him in. So he really lucked out in the sense that they just kept on giving him all these refines. Sacred Cowl as the special, which is completely throwaway. And honestly, same goes with the rest of his skills, Axe Breaker 3 and Ward Cavalry 3. We are way past the point of running those. I mean, Ward Cavalry isn't actually terrible if you're running cavalry bait units like Xander or Camus, for example. But in any other case, you really don't want Ward Cavalry. What I like doing with Cavalry units actually is running Blade Tomes on the Horse ones and then giving the other units Fortify and Hone Cavalry so it's easier for the Blade Tome units to just get maximum buffs. But otherwise, his base kit is pretty boring. He's just lucky that he's got double refines with his weapon. And for recommended IVs, I'm going to have to say go for either plus speed or plus attack. Either one is going to work just fine on this guy. And I forgot to mention this, but I am also doing this video before the Fey unit builder has actually updated. So we're not actually being shown Resplendent Elliewood's full stats. He's going to have basically plus 2 to everything that you see there. So he's actually at 42 HP, 49 attack, 36 speed, 25 defense, and 34 res with the one merge and the plus speed ivies. So keep that in mind. There's really just nothing I could do about it because the Fey unit builder hasn't updated yet. And moving on to the budget build with this guy, we are of course going with Blazing Durandal as the refine. For all the reasons I just explained, it's an amazing refine on him. Reposition as the assist, it's really just the bread and butter assist. Gale Force as the special, because with Blazing Durandal giving him that quick special charge from the special fighter effect, he's really going to have no trouble at all activating Gale Force. We've got Fury 3 in the A slot because Elliewood's actually a pretty well-rounded unit statistically. None of his stats are really that bad besides defense, 
which is being fixed by Blazing Durandal, giving him plus 10 defense when he initiates combat. And because it also negates the foe's chance at doing a follow-up attack, having some good defense and res bulk on this guy is going to make it really hard to get one-hit KOs on him when the foe's counterattack. So Fury 3 is a very good option. You could also go a little bit more high budget and go for Swift Sparrow 2, which is obtainable from a 4-star Nasala. That's not too hard to get. He's a Grand Hero Battle unit. But I think Fury 3 is a little bit better because it is giving you the defense and res. And it's also going to chip our HP down so we can go with the next option here, which is Desperation in the B-slot passive. So Desperation wants us to be below 75% health, which Fury 3 is going to help us do. And once he gets Desperation, he can just start hitting the foes twice in a row. And that's going to be real nice for him. Alternate B-slot options include Dull Close, if you want to just negate any of the foes' active buff skills. And Dull Close is very much just a budget option for a lull skill. We will take a look at the high investment build on this guy, and you'll notice that lull skills are pretty much the go-to for him. So Dull Close being a budget option of that is not bad by any means. And finally, you can go for Lunge on him as well, which is nice in Aether Raids. Lunge traps are very prevalent with units like Eliwood and Pan, who can just move three spaces in a turn, initiate combat on the foes, and then survive the hit and swap places with them. So all types of Aether Raids shenanigans can ensue at that point. And that makes Lunge a pretty cool option on him. And another pretty goofy option you can run on him, just like Lunge, is Pass. If he attacks the foes and he builds into Gale Force, he's going to be able to pass through the foe that he attacks and start attacking the back row. So another really good option for Aether Raids. If you're going to set him up on a defense team, having Pass can really throw a wrench into the plans of the opponents. If they're trying to just bait your entire team with a super tank, Eliwood can actually bypass that and start attacking the back row. So Pass is low-key a pretty cool option on him. And for the C-slot, we're going with Defense Smoke here, so he can attack the foes once, get some debuffs, and if he activates Gale Force, he'll be able to attack again on a foe that has minus 7 defense. So pretty nice synergy with the build there. But of course, as I mentioned earlier, with these horse units, you really can't go wrong with Fortify or Hone Cavalry. They still hold up so well, even though they're very old at this point. Just giving plus 6 to double stats is so good. And for the Sacred Seal, we've got Brazen Attack and Speed, since this is a Desperation build, and once he's low on HP and he's going to start activating Desperation, Brazen Attack and Speed is going to give him plus 7 to Attack and Speed, so very nice stuff. But of course, he's got other options too. You could go for the Death Blow Sacred Seal or the Swift Sparrow Sacred Seal. Either one of those works before he gets low on HP. So you may value that a little more than Brazen Attack and Speed, which only activates after he's low on HP. And finally, the high budget build for this guy is very much similar to the low budget one, except we're just running the high budget skills. Swift Sparrow 3 as the A slot passive, since he's going to initiate combat and it's going to give him a lot of attack and speed, which is what he wants. Attack and Speed Push 4 could also be an option though, if you want the instant attack and speed. And Attack and Speed Push works on both phases, so he doesn't have to always initiate combat to get the bonuses. For the B-slot, we of course have Lull Speed and Defense, so he's going to have an easier time double attacking foes, and he's also going to lower their defense so he does more damage. But honestly, any combo of Lull, Attack, Speed, or Defense is going to work just fine on him. He does have double defenses after Steady Impact is accounted for. So, Lull Attack for the foes is going to make it harder for them to deal a lot of damage to him. So, really, when it comes to the Lull skills on this guy, just pick your favorite, as long as it includes Attack, Speed, or Defense. And for the C-Slot passive, we're going with Joint Drive Attack. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I love this skill so much. It's just the most consistent way to raise your own attack. And it also raises the allies' attack as well, so that makes it a very strong C-Slot passive. But just like on the budget build, you could actually go for defense smoke here. So he can attack the foes, get gale force, and then attack another foe with minus 7 defense. But panic smoke is also another cool option too, and it's more high budget. So that way he can attack foes, inflict panic, and then attack someone again if he gets gale force. 
So very powerful stuff. Panic is gonna be real powerful again in a mode like Aether Raids where foes are gonna try to bait your entire team with a super tank. And if you can inflict panic on them and then get Gale Force on top of it and make a second attack, you're really gonna be hurting the foes bad. So another good option for sure. And for the Sacred Seal, we're going with Swift Sparrow too this time around. But really, any of the attack and speed combination Sacred Seals will work just fine. Like Brazen Attack and Speed or Death Blow. So just go with your favorite for the seal. So that just about covers us for Resplendent Eliwood. And we have information that the next Resplendent hero is going to be Hector. So now we've got the full trio from Fire Emblem 7 as Resplendent heroes. So Lin, Eliwood, and Hector. And Resplendent Hector is actually going to be pretty awesome. Because that's just a free copy of Distant Counter for everyone that has the Fey Pass. And Distant Counter is still one of the best ace slots in the game. So really nice fodder on that Resplendent Hector if you don't want to use him. And honestly, he's not really going to benefit too much from the Resplendent buffs as opposed to some of these other units. Because Hector is an armored unit. And a lot of the meta armored units just have such high base stat totals now that even getting plus 10 to his BST really isn't going to save him. But he will end up having a better BST overall than both the Legendary and the Valentine's Hector. And he did also steal Valentine Hector's weapon, just like Eliwood stole Brave Roy's weapon. He's also not a seasonal or a legendary unit, so it's going to be easier to get merges on him. But he is still a 5-star locked unit, so for most people that's still not going to be the case. But it is very cool, and his artwork is pretty rad, so I was happy to see Hector getting the next Resplendent alt. And once again guys, let me know in the comments section who you think is going to be the next Resplendent hero after Hector. So they have been keeping up with the pattern of 3 or 4 star summon and then 5 star exclusive. So the next one should be another 3 or a 4 star unit. And I'm really interested to see who they're going to do next. So let me know that in the comments section who you think is going to be next for the Resplendent heroes. And that's going to wrap us up for today. So as always, this is your boy Tacho signing out. Hope you guys enjoyed the builds and hope you guys are going to be enjoying your resplendent Eliwood just as much as I am because he's such a great unit. And as always, have a great day and I'll catch you guys again in the next one.